This summer we've been studying character, and this morning we're going to take a look at Abraham and look at Abraham's character. The Bible emphasizes two main attributes of Abraham's character. These are not only crucial to understanding who Abraham was as a person, but also crucial to our understanding of God and his desire for all peoples of the world. Abraham is referred to often as Father Abraham. How many of you know the song? Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them. And so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left. Now we're done. If I can make a fool of myself up here for doing that, you guys can certainly sing a wrong, right? Yeah. Why is Abraham called the father? Well, he was certainly the father of Isaac and the cer- certainly the father of the nation of Israel. But more importantly, he's the father of everyone who puts their faith in Jesus Christ. This is why he's called the father of many nations. Not just the father of the nation of Israel, the father of many nations. Because he put his faith in God Almighty. This is Abraham's legacy. This is how he has brought blessing to all the peoples on the earth, his faith. This summer we've been saying it's all about character. And if it's all about character, then this faith of Abraham is one of the most foundational aspects of character. What do I mean exactly by Abraham's faith? Abraham believed God and Abraham obeyed God. Say, Abraham believed God. Say, Abraham obeyed God. These are the two foundational aspects of Abraham's character. And if we wish to be those who live by faith, we need to understand Abraham's example and grow by his example. So let's take a look at that this morning. Abraham believed God. Genesis 15, 6 says, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Now this short statement is so pivotal, it's like the fulcrum on which the Old Testament swings. It was so important that the Apostle Paul, in his book to the Romans, he wrote this as a major theme. The book of Romans was the quintessential book of our understanding about God and his will for mankind. And Paul wrote about this as the major theme. Abraham believed God, and God credited to him as righteousness. This is huge. How can we begin to wrap our minds around this crucial truth? Well, first of all, let's back up and we'll pick up the story at the beginning. God had a plan to save and redeem the world, and he chose Abraham to be a major part of it. The Bible tells us that God called Abraham out of his hometown of Ur in the country of the Chaldeans, and then the Lord revealed to him the plan for his life. We find this in Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to read this. For us, This is what we heard earlier in the children's message, but I want to read it for us again. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who cur- bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed you. These are, these are unbelievable promises. He promised that his, his descendants would become a great nation, that would, God would bless his name and make it great, and all the peoples of the world would be blessed through him. This is an amazing, amazing promise by God. 
the crazy thing about this is that Abraham believed him. Abraham believed what God had to say. What would you say if God came up to you and said that everyone on planet Earth would know about your name and be blessed by you? Not 15 minutes of fame, centuries, millennia of fame. Abraham, this is the promise that God made to him. Now, Abraham didn't really have a lot of information to go on from God's promise. God told him to get up and go to a country that he would show him future tense. Abraham didn't have a GPS navigation. We went down to Bloomington, Illinois. Yes, we did. We braved Illinois, and we went down yesterday to Bloomington, Illinois. But we had a GPS with us, thank the Lord, that we could know where we were going. Abraham didn't have GPS. God didn't tell him where to go. He just said go. So Abraham got up and left. You see, Abraham had a decision to make. He didn't know what was in store for him. He didn't even know the directions that he was supposed to take. Everything he knew was simply based on whether he could believe the words of this God that came to him. You know what happened to Abraham. He did trust him. His answer was, was yes. So he and his family got up, sent, set out, ended up in the land of Canaan, which today we know is the land of Israel. Now when Abram and his family arrived in Canaan, the Lord appeared to him again, Genesis 12, 7, and he said, to your offspring, I will give this land. Well, it just keeps on getting better and better. He's just getting these blessings right and left, promises right and left. There's one problem. Abraham doesn't have any kids. Abraham doesn't have any kids. So this promise is kind of dependent on whether or not he has kids. All of the promises he's gotten so far are dependent on whether he has kids. They had no children. Abraham and Sarah, they've been trying for a long time to have kids. He was 75 at this moment in his life. Now, even back in the Bible time, 75 was kind of old to have kids, right? It's pretty old right now to have kids, but back then it was still the same thing. In spite of this, Abraham believed God. The Apostle Paul described it this way in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 4, 18. He says this, Against all hope, Abraham believed. Against all hope, Abraham believed. Contrary to what Abraham could see and touch and understand, he believed the words of the God who came to him and said, I will bless you. Now, we all face situations like Abraham. When God tells us things that we are to believe that are contrary to everything that we know that is around us and everything that is in our mind and everything that's according to our background, God tells us to believe his words. Let me describe it this way. When the bottom drops out in our life and everything disappears and everything goes bad, God asks us to trust him and to put our faith in him. When all we have to go on is his word and everything around us is falling apart. Have you ever heard this statement before? I didn't know God was all I needed until God was all I had. Do you know why God does that in our lives? Because he wants us not to trust in the things that we can see and the things that we know and the things that we've experienced. He wants us to trust fully and completely in Him and in His Word. Reach out and touch the pew in front of you. Touch the pew in front of you. That's a piece of wood that's been around for a long, long time. Did you know that God has been around longer than the piece of wood? He will exist longer than that piece of wood is going to be a, a reality in this world. God is more real than the things that we can touch and the things that we can see. 
And what he wants us to move to the understanding of is that we can trust his word even more than anything that we know and understand. God is true. He is faithful. He will do what he said he will do. He will bring it to pass. We need to be like Abraham and believe what God says. Have you experienced an Abraham moment in your life? Have you experienced an Abraham moment in your life where you get to the end of everything around you and you realize that all you have left is to trust in the words that God is saying to you and to trust in the Bible? If you are at that point in your life, then I say, praise the Lord. You are ready to move into a faith that's like the faith of Abraham. Do not run from those situations. God has put you there on purpose. It's what he wants you to go through. Because he wants you not to simply have the faith of a world that's fickle and gets blown back and forth by any situation that happens to them. He wants you to have the faith like Abraham that trusts in God no matter what he says. We trust in God because we know who he is. We know his personality. We know his character. When God says it, it will happen. Will we be people that have the faith of Abraham and trust in his word above everything else in our lives? Abraham did. And because of that, God blessed him and caused him to be the father of many nations. Back to Abraham and his story. About ten years after he arrived in Canaan, Abraham was still waiting on the Lord to make good on his promise. And then God appeared to him in a vision. Now, I can just see the wheels turning in Abraham's mind as God appears to him in a vision again. You see, Abraham, he doesn't have any children at this point. All of God's promises depend on whether or not he has children, and he has no children. So just in case the Lord has kind of forgotten about this small little aspect of his promises coming to pass, Abraham decides to remind him. Genesis 15, 3 says this, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Now let me break it down to you in the common uh, vernacular, what Abraham is saying here, okay? Just so we understand. Hey God, what's the deal? You ever go to the Lord like that? What's the deal? What about this promise that you made me? I held up my end of the bargain. I moved my whole family and everything I have to Timbuktu. Where's this son that you promised me? In case you haven't noticed, God, I'm not getting any younger here. Don't you know there's a cutoff point for this kind of thing? You know what I'm saying? Did you forget about your end of the deal, God? And of course, God didn't forget about his end of the deal because God doesn't forget. And he doesn't fail to follow through on his promises. But you see, he had a bigger plan than just giving Abraham a son. You see, the Lord was not just building a nation from Abraham. He was building a kingdom. God was building a kingdom that would be populated by people that have faith like Abraham. He was more concerned about the faith of you and me than simply about bringing about a new group of people. And so he brought Abraham through this situation where his faith was tested. The Lord reassured him with a very clear message, Genesis 15, 4, this man will not be your heir, but a son from your own body will be your heir. Abraham once again decided to believe God, and the Lord responded by crediting his account with righteousness. Righteousness means having right standing before God, having all of your sins wiped away, and being able to stand before a holy and pure God completely pure. Righteousness before God has always been granted because of faith. Righteousness before God has always been 
given by faith. Listen to what Romans 1.17 says. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. This faith, or believing what God says, is what characterized Abraham's life. When God said it, he believed it. Contrary to what anything around him said was happening. Abraham believed God. Second characteristic of Abraham is Abraham obeyed God. Abraham obeyed God. Obedience to God's will flows out of belief in what God says. Obedience to God's will flows out of belief in what God says. Obedience without personally trusting in God's word is merely an attempt to get on God's good side by jumping through God's hoops, so to speak. It is an external solution to an inward problem. It is the solution that the Pharisees tried to solve their problem of sin with. And Jesus had very harsh words for them. Listen to what he said in Matthew 23, 27. He says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of bones of the dead and everything un." clean. Unless we personally trust in Christ and in his word, we will remain dead in our sins and never experience the righteousness of God that comes through faith. It is not simply about being a good person. It is believing God and letting obedience flow out of that belief. Abraham believed God and because of his belief, he obeyed what God told him to do. Sometimes God asks us to do difficult things. Has God ever asked you to do a difficult thing in your life? Abraham got a son, and his name was Isaac. And Isaac was the joy of he and Sarah's life. But when Isaac was still a young boy, God asked him to do something, perhaps the most difficult thing a father has ever been asked to do. Genesis 22, verse 2 says this, Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain. I will show you. Now wait a minute. Wasn't this the son that God promised Abraham to have? What's the deal with God telling him to go and sacrifice him? Isn't this the same God that later on in the Bible says not to murder people? What is the deal? Why in the world would God ask Abraham to do this incredible thing? Unbelievable. And yet, Abraham obeyed God. Because God said it, He did it. He took Isaac on a three-day journey. He prepared him as a sacrifice on the mountain that God commanded. He tied him up. He laid him on the altar. And he raised his knife to kill him. And at the very moment that he raised his knife, the Lord cried out to stop Abraham. He said, Abraham, don't lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Now I know, God said, that you fear God. You see, Abraham cared more about God's word and God's will than he did about his own will, the things in his life. Let me say that again. Abraham cared more about God's word and God's will than he cared about his own will and desires in his life. He believed, and because he respected God above everything else, he obeyed. He is our example of faith. Oh, that we would have this kind of faith, the faith of Abraham, where we would value and honor God's word above every desire that we have in our life. And we've got plenty of desires that conflict with God's word and God's will in our lives. Instead of offering his son Isaac 
as a sacrifice, the Lord provided a ram that Abraham then offered to God. On that mountain, the Lord provided for Abraham so that he wouldn't have to sacrifice his son. But on that mountain, God provided for each one of us. On that mountain that Abraham sacrificed that ram, God provided for every single one of us because he gave us an example of faith that we get a chance to follow in those footsteps. Listen to what the Bible says about Abraham's faith. It said, By faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. One thing Abraham understood and that we also need to understand is that God is true to his promises. God will keep his promises. You know in the Bible there are lots of promises. There are lots of promises and God is true to every single one of them. He's true to the ones that apply to our lives. Have you believed God's promises in the scriptures for your life? If you haven't, then you need to start following in the footsteps of Abraham. In spite of everything that's going on around you, follow in Abraham's footsteps. You see, we may not see how, I mean, might not know why, but God is always true. We must learn to stop working our own plans and trying to figure out things for ourselves and do things God's way. We can't be the kind of people that say this, if doing it God's way doesn't work out, I've got a backup plan that's ready to go. We've got to cut that out. If we want to be people of faith like Abraham, it's, try, it's time to drop plan B. It's time to get rid of plan B. We all have a tendency to create plan B. You know what? Abraham even created plan B. You remember this story? Sarah and Abraham, it's taken a long time for God to get around to bringing Isaac about. So he said, hey, we're, let's, let's figure this out on our own. So Sarah says, Abraham, I've got a maid servant, Hagar. Let me give you to her. You can sleep with her and create a family for me, for us, from her. But you know what? God wasn't in the business of creating a family by using a surrogate mother. That wasn't his plan. His plan was to use Isaac, Sarah's son. Hagar gave birth to Ishmael, but even though Ishmael was Aaron's son, uh, Abraham's son, Ishmael was not God's plan. God said, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Ishmael has become a metaphor for our futile attempts to bring about God's promises by using our own plans and our own efforts and our own timing. We can even deceive ourselves into thinking that because God has blessed us that our plans were the right ones. You know, God did bless Abraham's son, Ishmael. He made Ishmael into a great nation. All of the Arab peoples of the world today trace their ancestry back to Ishmael. But here's one problem. The blessing came through Isaac because Isaac, the father of Jacob, the father of the nation of Israel, from whom Jesus Christ was descended, the one who has brought blessing to the entire world now and forever. God's plan was to work through Abraham's son, Isaac. Simply put, all of our attempts to bring about God's will, apart from his blessing and his direction, are useless. It's time to give up your plan B. It's time to put all of your eggs in God's basket. If you haven't had the opportunity to do that, today is a great day. You can start by even saying, you know what, Lord? I've done things my own way. Now I'm going to do it your way. Whatever you say, God, I am going to follow you. If you haven't ever had the chance and the opportunity to do that, today is a great day. It's beautiful out. Sun's not shining, but it doesn't matter. The sun's shining in here. Now is the time. Abraham, what an example of faith. 
You know, the Bible says that all of our righteousness is like filthy rags. When we try plan B in our lives, it's like we're trying to work out our own righteousness before an almighty and holy God, and it's never going to work. The Bible is clear. The righteous will live because of their faith, which is belief in God and obedience to God. Abraham provided for us a great truth, and that is to live by faith. All who want to follow God will follow the example of Abraham. Belief without obedience to God means that our faith is dead. The Bible says faith without works is dead in the book of James. Obedience without belief, as I've talked about already, is hypocrisy. In Abraham, we see these two characteristics working together. And because of this, he was able to enter into the promises that God had for him. And this is what God said because Abraham believed and obeyed. Genesis chapter 22. I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and you have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the skies and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Abraham isn't the only one that received promises from God. We have all received a promise from God. His promise is for an abundant life, a full life, a life that gives glory and honor to God. If we are wanting that kind of life that Jesus has promised, then we must be people of faith. We must follow in the footsteps of Abraham, believing God and obeying God. I pray, I pray wherever you are in your journey of faith today, you may have followed Jesus for many years in your life. I want to encourage you that you still have steps of faith to take today, wherever you are. If you followed Jesus your entire life, you still have steps of faith to take today. If you're beginning on the journey of faith, there are steps for you to take today. May we be people that live by faith, just like the Bible said, the righteous live by faith, like Abraham. I want to encourage you also, Abraham blew it big time. You can blow it big time and still come back and live by faith. Have you blown it big time? Guess what? You're in great company. Look to your left and look to your right. you got great company. We are all in the same boat. But God says, let's leave the past behind. Let's take these steps of faith forward. And let's live by faith. This Abraham, he's a great guy. Let's live by his example, shall we? Let me pray for us here as we close this morning. Lord, I thank you for this example of Abraham. I thank you for the way that you put this in the scripture for us to know about today. So that we can learn and we can grow, Father, as we think about the Word of God, you can transform our hearts and put it in our minds, Lord, and make us different, make us more like the people you want us to be. Not because, Father, we're working really hard, because we're living by faith, God. Help us to be these people that live by faith. So, Lord, not just for our own sake, but for the sake of your kingdom. Lord, you are building a great kingdom, and you've called people to be a part of it. Lord, you've called us to be a part of it. Help us to be a part of building your kingdom here on earth. Lord, may your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And do your will through us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.